Rogue here again this morning, uh, and Kat from Standing Stone Kennels, and today we're going to work on collar conditioning to kennel, which is the cue that we use for anywhere we want the dog to go, whether that's on their dog bed, in their crate, um, as she gets bigger and is able to uh, physically do things like jump up in the back of the truck, all those places we want her to go will be kennel. Uh, in a previous video, we did a clicker training session using positive reinforcement to clicker train her to go on her dog bed. And so we're going to revisit that here for you in just a minute, as well as um, Rogue, she's in her crate now. <laughs> she spends a lot of time um, going in her crate in between play sessions and when we're working, uh, she has to go in her crate to be out of the way. So we've worked through a lot of repetition of just leading her into her crate by her collar, um, using the cue kennel, and then giving her a reward once she's in there. So she's come to learn that going in her crate is a great thing too because she's gonna get rewarded. So like I said, I'm gonna just build a little momentum revisit uh, the place training on the dog bed and then as well as in the crate with a little bit of clicker training. So I've got my clicker and some treats. This will help build some momentum as well as keep Rogue's focus, which she's already super focused. So kennel. Good. We'll do a few repetitions on her dog bed. Okay. Okay. Kennel. Okay, kennel. So this is a half on, she's not all the way on. I want her all the way on her bed. So I'm not gonna mark that until she's all the way there. Okay, also keep in mind when we've used the clicker before, the clicker not only marks the behavior we're looking for, but it ends the behavior. I wasn't watching, she jumped on her bed. So I'm gonna mark that and tell her she can get off. Good, okay, okay, Rogue. Um, but as soon as she hears that click, that can end the behavior. So now I'm gonna have her go in her crate a few times. Rogue, kennel, which I might just take leading her in a few times. Kennel, good. Rogue, kennel, kennel. Kennel. So she's waiting for the treat. I don't have a treat in my hand. I'm not baiting her into the crate. I'm just kind of tapping the crate. Going to lead her in one more time here. Good girl. Just turn around, ready for that treat. Build a little momentum. Rogue. Rogue. Okay. Kennel. So that time I didn't have to use the collar to lead her in. I didn't grab a hold of it and lead her in. I just kind of motioned with my hand. Good. Rogue. Kennel. Again, I didn't have to get a hold of her collar, just motioned into the direction of the crate. Okay, do a few more reps here. Kennel, good. So building a lot of momentum. She's going in much more directly than she was right at the beginning there. Rogue, kennel, good. So another thing I'm doing, which I don't know if you noticed, is I'm not asking her to kennel when she's over here next to the crate. I'm getting her out, swinging her, moving her in that direction so that we've got that momentum building that direction. There's the treat you were waiting for. Good girl. So I'm going to put my clicker away and my treats away. Um, I'll still use a few treats overlaying with the collar conditioning that I'll be doing so that uh, we're kind of bridging that gap between positive reinforcement and using the negative reinforcement. So the positive reinforcement is she gets something, a reward, the treat for doing what we're asking. The negative reinforcement side of things is she's going to shut the stimulation or the vibration off by doing what we're asking. So I'm gonna just tip the crate, get down, up out of the way so it's not an option while we're working on um, Kelling on the dog bed because like we mentioned before we use one cue for multiple places and when I have two places that we just worked on positive reinforcement clicker training on to both as kennel she might pick one or the other and I just want to focus on one for the beginning of this and then the other so I'll flip the dog bed up out of the way so to get her to go on the dog bed to shut the collar off she has to first be off the dog bed so okay rogue 
So she's going to feel the collar as soon as I say kennel. And then as soon as she's on the dog bed, it's going to shut off. So rogue kennel. Okay. Kennel. Good. She's still getting a few treats here too. Again, this is a pretty low distraction environment, so we're just using vibrate, especially at the beginning of this collar conditioning process. Kennel. Whoops, I dropped your treat. There you go. Okay. Kennel. So she's feeling vibrate on the bed. Good girl. As you can see too, with this collar conditioning, um, I'm able to send her to the dog bed from a little bit farther away than I was able to when I was just using the positive reinforcement, which um, is something that we're looking uh, to build off of is that I could send her to a place from farther and farther, as well as once she's on that place, help keep her there. Um, so if she would try and step off the dog bed, I could use the vibrate to say, hey, no, you're supposed to still stay there. Good, okay, okay. Kennel. Good. So when I'm releasing her from her place as well, um, something that I want to draw attention to is with the clicker training, like I had mentioned, the click not only marks the behavior but ends the behavior so she doesn't have to stay on her bed anymore. But while we're doing the collar conditioning to place, um, once she's on that place, she needs to stay there until released with OK. And when we release a dog from our dog beds or our crates or anything like that, we always tap them on the head, OK, OK, Rogue, and kind of lead them off. Uh, that is to help with anticipation. If she thinks when I make eye contact with her or when I come into the room once she's better at this, at staying on her dog bed, that she's going to get released every time she makes eye contact. Or if I say just the word okay in general conversation, um, she's going to start releasing herself. But if she knows that the only time she actually gets released from her dog bed is by going to her and telling her okay, then that's going to eliminate um, that anticipation of just getting off her dog bed whenever she feels like it. So, kennel. So she's feeling vibrate. She's not on her bed, so I'm going to just help with my body language to get her back over to that bed a little bit more. Give her another treat. Okay. Kennel. So she's not all the way on the bed again. She's kind of doing the half on half off. So the vibrate didn't shut off until she got all the way over onto her bed. Good. Good girl. She can get attention while she's on the bed, but I didn't release her, so she feels vibrate until she's back on. Uh, uh, uh. Just give her a little bit of attention. Rogue. So she's still feeling vibrate because I haven't released her. Okay. So what I'm noticing is when I come over to give her attention while she's on her bed, she feels like she should be released. So I just need to show her that being petted on isn't the way she's being released. Being released, ah, ah, rogue, so she feels vibrate. Being released, ah, ah. Ah, is okay. That is her release. So we'll do a few more reps. Kennel. Good. She's not getting a treat these times. She's just feeling the collar. A lot of focus still though, which is something we like to see. Okay. We'll do one more here and then we'll switch to the crate. Kennel. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to flip her dog bed up out of the way. So then we can use the crate, and I'm going to flip that back down. She's like going right back in it. So the fact that she's really comfortable going in and out of her crate is really important. If it's a battle to fight her to get into the crate, that means she's not really been um, conditioned to going in there in a positive way yet, and she's not ready for collar conditioning to her crate. But the next step will be still using some treats again. And then she's going to feel vibrate until she's all the way in that crate. And I might have to lead her in, um, but we'll show you what that looks like. 
So I haven't used the collar yet. Haven't used the cue. She just went in. So rogue kennel. Feeling the collar? There we go. Good. She gets the treat. Okay. Again, waiting for the release to come out of the crate. I haven't asked her to go back in. She's just built a lot of momentum and feeling comfortable going in the crate, which is not a bad thing. Um, but just like on the dog bed, if she tries to come out early, she's going to feel the vibrate to go back in there because I haven't released her. So this time I'm actually going to ask Rogue Kennel, move a little towards the crate and it shuts off. Going to get a treat. Good. Okay. Good. Kennel. Good. Oh, and I forgot to turn my phone on to do not disturb. So we got a phone call in there. We're still good. Okay. So I didn't ask that time. So she can just come out when she feels like it. Okay, Rogue. Kennel. Waiting for that treat. Good. Okay. So I'm going to stop doing the treats here because I want to show that the conditioning is also happening with the collar, not just the anticipation of that treat. So, okay. Kennel. When she's in, she stops feeling the vibrate, but if she comes out before I release her, again, she'll feel the vibrate until she's back in there. Okay. Good. Kennel. Ah, so she came back out partially. I'm going to just tap her toes. Ah, kennel. Tap her toes until she got back in there. Then she came right back out again. Ah, ah, ah. So she's waiting for that treat. And I just want her to stay in there until she's released, even without a treat involved. So she kind of crept out. She felt vibrate. I tapped on her toes a little bit to help her back up into that crate until I release her. Okay, good. Now, she's a puppy, and we've just started this collar conditioning process. So the expectation isn't that she's going to go in a crate with the door open or on a dog bed and stay there for 10, 20 minutes yet, um, especially without any correction. Now, the goal will be to build up to that. I mean, when our adult dogs come up to hang out in the house, um, they get to stay on their dog beds for much longer than a few seconds. Um, so they'll stay on there for a couple hours without needing to be reminded. And that's just a conditioning process. And the goal is to eventually be able to get Rogue to be to that um, level of conditioning. She's getting a little distracted. I'll call her back over here. Rogue kennel. Good. So she crept back out a little bit, feeling vibrate until she's back in. Ah, ah, kennel. So she's feeling vibrate, kennel, until she's back in there. Okay. But she's just a puppy, so her focus is definitely a lot shorter than an adult dog's at this point. But we've made really good progress with the collar conditioning process. We can build on that to start to expect longer and longer amounts of time that she's going to be on her dog bed or in a crate with the door open. Um, and continue to build on that so that we can show you her progress in a, another couple sessions. Good, good girl. Stay down. So still jumping up for attention once in a while, which we just help work through. Good, good. One more rep here, kennel. Okay, good girl. So stay tuned for another uh, live video from Rogue coming soon.